Hello, this is Father Randy Sly with another installment of Day by Day, where each day we take a look at a reading from Holy Scripture found in the Daily Mass. And today is Sunday. It is the 17th Sunday in Ordinary Time. And one of the shifts that you're going to see beginning with this Sunday is we're going to be spending a number of Sundays leaving uh, the uh, Gospel of St. Mark and going to John's Gospel. You know, Mark's Gospel is much shorter than the others, and so during a part of the second cycle, which is the cycle of St. Mark, we do depart for a time and uh, spend time in, in with John on Sundays. So today that day begins, uh, and uh, we will be looking at a very familiar p- uh, passage from Holy Scripture, a reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus went across the Sea of Galilee. A large crowd followed him because they saw the signs he was performing on the sick. Jesus went up on the mountain, and there he sat down with his disciples. The Jewish feast of Passover was near. When Jesus raised his eyes and saw that a large crowd was coming to him, he said to Philip, Where can we buy enough food for them to eat? He said this to test him because he himself knew what he was going to do. Philip answered him, Two hundred days' wages worth of food would not be enough for each of them to have a little bit. One of the disciples, Andrew, the brother of Simon Peter, said to him, There is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish, but what good are these among so many? Jesus said, Have the people recline. Now there was a great deal of grass in the place, so the men reclined, about five thousand in number. Then Jesus took the loaves, gave thanks, and distributed to them, or to those distributed them to those who were reclining, and also as much of the fish as they wanted. When they had their fill, he said to his disciples, Gather the fragments left over, so that nothing will be wasted. So they collected them and filled twelve wicker baskets with fragments from the five barley loaves that had been more than they could eat. When the people saw the sign he had done, they said, Truly this is, or truly, uh, this is truly the prophet, the one who has come into the world. Since Jesus knew that they were going to come and carry him off to make him king, he withdrew again to the mountain alone. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, here as we are back in John's gospel, we have, of course, the feeding of the 5,000. And as you can see from John's description, this is 5,000 men. This is not including the women and children that were all already there with them. And so um, you may have had anywhere from, say, 10 to maybe 13,000 people there getting ready to eat. And Jesus had just two things available, five loaves and two fish. And the big difference is what happens between the time he receives the gift and the time that he distributes the gift. And that is he uh, took the loaves, gave thanks, and then distributed them. And, of course, there are so many beautiful ways in which this miracle of the feeding of the 5,000 just helps us to remember how good God is to those of us who continue to follow after him. Because in the Mass, for example, we take what we have, we take bread, and we also give thanks. That's what the word Eucharist means. So when we have... Uh, the liturgy of the word, we are uh, studying and we're listening to the word of God and we're listening to the application uh, through the homily of what the gospel and the other passages are all about. That's called the liturgy of the word. But then we have the liturgy of the Eucharist as the second part of the mass. Liturgy of the Eucharist is the liturgy of thanksgiving. We're taking bread, we're giving thanks. And what happens? A miracle takes place. The bread doesn't multiply in terms of its number. It multiplies in terms of its effectiveness, its grace, 
what it means. It is, as we teach in the church, transubstantiated. In other words, it may look like bread, but it has become for us the body, blood, soul, and divinity of our Lord Jesus Christ. So this great miracle then gives us the opportunity to take something common and to receive something extraordinary as we partake of it after the liturgy of the Eucharist. The beautiful thing is grace doesn't have a limited proportion. There is always more grace and more grace. Just like as Jesus gathered up the fragments of the bread, there is always more grace that we can obtain from the Lord. And that grace is really his divine presence by the Holy Spirit with us, his uh, living in our hearts, in our lives, and allowing us to have his divine presence, his strength, in, so that we can live our lives as participants in his divine nature. It's not just up to us to live a good life, but rather to cooperate with his presence in us that he might help us to live that life for the glory of God. So, a good passage and a great reminder for us. And one of the interesting things that we will see is that he takes this passage and it is here that he begins to talk about the bread from heaven that uh, will do more than earthly bread could ever imagine. So, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts together be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Well, we're off and running with week 17 of Ordinary Time. And uh, the Lord willing, I will see you tomorrow on Monday with Day by Day. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.